Okay, we're back. This is uh, AP Physics 1 check-in number 6. <clears throat> I'm going to talk a little bit about impulse and momentum. Again, try the, uh, try the problems as we go through it, and I think you can pause the video and then restart it when you think you're ready to go. Okay, here's the first question. <clears throat> a hockey puck is hit with a stick with a force of 17.50, that's 17.50 newtons, and a collision takes place between the hockey puck and the stick, stick and the puck of 0 0.025 seconds. And asked, what is the impulse delivered to the hockey puck? Now we didn't really use a symbol for impulse. But the impulse, we calculated it two different ways, but in this case, we're just gonna say that it's force multiplied by the time interval uh, that the collision takes place. In this case, that's a 17.50 Newton force and 0 0.025 seconds of time. And if you do that, that gets you 0.438 and it's Newton seconds. And it might, you might even add that there's a direction if the puck hits it to the right, then the impulse will be to the right. Second question says, what is the impulse delivered to the hockey stick? Well, from Newton's third law, the force that one exerts on the other is equal to the force back. So the impulse for the hockey stick has to be equal to the force times the change in time again. You're going to get the same answer, 0.438 newton seconds, it's just going to be in the opposite direction. Same impulse between the two, the force the puck exerts back has to also be 17.50 uh, newtons from Newton's third law. So the impulse is the same, it's just in the opposite direction for the stick versus the puck. Okay. Next. Question, same um, situation. What is the change of momentum of the hockey puck? Well, that was the other way of finding what the impulse is. That would be equal to the change in momentum. So that's the other way, which would be the mass times the change in velocity. But that's also still equal to the force multiplied by the change in time, which we already calculated. So the change in momentum for the hockey puck is just equal to the impulse of the hockey puck, and that was 0.438. You could say Newton seconds, but those are also the same as kilogram meters per second. Either one of those two units is sufficient, but it's the same number. It's the exact same answer as part A. And then the last question says, if the puck is initially at rest, what is the final speed of the puck? Well, the change in momentum is equal to, as we said above, mass times the change in velocity, which would be the mass multiplied by the final velocity minus the initial velocity. The initial velocity being zero, so the first term drops out. So our change in momentum is just equal to the mass times the final velocity. Your final velocity is what we're looking for, is then just equal to the change in momentum over the mass. Change of momentum was your 0.438. And maybe now you're going to see why I said kilogram meters per second. Because we can divide by the mass. The mass was given in the problem. I'm not sure if you remember seeing it. It's up on the top. 0.18 kilograms. So if we take 0.18 kilograms, then the kilogram units cancel. And then that leaves us with an answer of, if you do that, 2.43 meters per second. It's going to have the same direction because it is a vector as the change in momentum was. So it's going to be in that same direction to the right. Okay, so I hope that problem makes sense. Let's go on to the next situation. <clears throat> this is more of a graphical problem. It says, what is the total change in momentum of the object during the five second period? Notice in this case they're graphing force in newtons versus time in seconds. The change in momentum, we said, was equal to the impulse, the force times the change in time. So if you remember from our graphical analysis part of the class, 
the change in momentum will just be equal to the area under the curve for this. So what you need to do is find the areas of the separate pieces. And it says for the whole five seconds, well, notice that the time at, or the force at between zero and two is constantly increasing up to two seconds. Take the area of that whole rectangle, 10 by two, and it's a half of that, and that's gonna give you 10 as the area. Take a look at the next area. This That would be bounded by 2 and 4 seconds. That's 2 seconds times 10, so that's an area of 20. And then here it drops quickly in 1 second, the whole 10. So it's 10 times 1. Take half of that because it's a triangle, and that gives you 5. So the total momentum in this problem would be 10 plus 20 plus 5 and that would be the units of Newton's seconds. So the total momentum would be 35 Newton seconds, or if it feels better for you, 35 kilogram meters per second. So that should be the answer to that problem, it is just by taking a look at the area under the curve. Okay. Last problem for this particular assignment, was a ballistic pendulum. That was a situation where you have a, a sphere launched, so you have a ball launched into something that has the ability to then swing, so it's a pendulum and it swings up. So there are three steps. First, the ball is moving, then there's the collision and it embeds itself in it, and then it raises up to a certain height. The information given in the problem is the mass of the ball was 50 grams, mass of the pendulum 750 grams, and the initial velocity of the ball 22 meters per second. And so first part of this is to say determine the speed of the collision immediately, or the speed of the uh, both of them immediately after the collision. So if you haven't tried it yet, why don't you pause it and take a quick second to see if you could do that. Um, if it says collision... I think that's the type of situation where you immediately use momentum conservation. The total momentum P equals the total momentum afterwards P prime. So P equals P prime. That would be the momentum of the ball plus the momentum of the pendulum. So that's the, moment, the mass of the ball times the velocity of the ball. Plus, wouldn't that be okay to say that the pendulum is not moving? And then afterwards, that's going to be the mass of the ball plus the mass of the pendulum times the new velocity, V prime. Um, put in some numbers. This is 0.05, let's go kilograms, times 22 meters per second. And then that's equal to the mass of 0.05 plus 750 grams is 0.75. So it looks like that's going to be 0.8 kilograms times the number. And if you do the math on that, you get 1.38 meters per second as the speed of both of them right after the collision. Hopefully that's making some sense. The next part of that problem is can we determine what the height to which the whole system rises, which would be what's happening in the third step. So in that case, the reason why this is a pretty common physics problem is the first part you used momentum conservation in the collision. The second part, it makes sense that it's going to rise up, that you're going to use energy conservation to figure out what the potential energy at the top might be. Okay, So in this case, potential at the bottom plus the kinetic at the bottom is going to equal the potential energy at the top plus any kinetic energy at the top. Well at the bottom I think it would be wise to say that's what we're going to call the zero point of potential energy. So it just has kinetic energy which would be one half the mass of the ball plus the mass of the pendulum times V squared. At the top it's going to have some potential energy due to gravity, which would be, again, the mass of the ball plus the mass of the pendulum. 
they're working together, times g times any height that is raised to, that's the height that you want to find. And then the highest point, wouldn't it be correct to say that it has no kinetic energy because it's not moving anymore? Now, the interesting thing and the nice thing is that the masses are the same on either side, so they can cancel. And so what we're going to do is just find the height. That's just going to be V squared over 2 times the acceleration to gravity. V was what we got in the first part, 1.38 meters per second. And we're going to square that. And then divide by 2 times 9.8 meters per second squared. You can probably see how the units are going to cancel. And it's going to end up with a height in meters. And that ends up being 0.09 six five meters which is the same as nine point six five centimeters so that's the answer to that problem i think that does it for that particular assignment hope that was worthwhile a little bit of en impulse and momentum and we threw a little bit of energy in that last problem this is a classic problem because of the fact that he uses both conservation laws at the same time okay so wait till next time to see the next installment Hope you stay safe. Thanks.